I have a very specific concern with AI. Like generally, I'm a, I'm very pro technology, and I really believe in the sort of like uh, the upsides usually outweigh the downsides. Every technology can be misused. You should usually wait, and you should wait until you eventually, as we understand it better, you want to put in regulations. But like regulating early is usually a mistake. Um, when you do do regulation, you want to be making regulations that are about uh, reducing risk and, in, and for uh, innovation and actually uh, authorizing more innovation. Innovation is usually good for us. Um, I sort of have a, a very a very high level like syllogism about like like AI that I, I've come to believe that I think is like correct. Which is like if we can build, if you consider intelligence to be the capacity to solve problems from a given set of resources to a given goal, we are building things that are more and more intelligent. Like the, the we've built an intelligence. It's kind of amazing actually. We built something like definably. It's, it may not be the smartest intelligence, but it is an intelligence. It can solve problems. So we built something that can solve problems like arbitrary problems from arbitrary resources and make arbitrary plans. At some point. As it gets better, the kinds of problems it will be able to insult, solve will include uh, programming, chip design, material science, uh, power production, um, all of the things you would need to design an artificial intelligence. At that point, you will be able to point the thing we've built back at itself. And this will happen in, before you get that point with humans in the loop. It already, it already is happening with humans in the loop. But that loop will get tighter and tighter and tighter and faster and faster and faster until it can fully self-improve itself, at which point it will get very fast, very quickly. And a thing that is very, very, very smart, that, and you generate something that is very good, very intelligent. And by intelligent, again, I mean this capacity to solve problems. There's people, there's lots of ways people, that's, it's, a, it's an English word, which means it has no one definition. But I have that, in that sense, we mean that kind of intelligence. And that kind of intelligence is just an intrinsically very dangerous thing because intelligence is power. Human beings are the dominant form of life on this planet pretty much entirely because we were more and smarter than the other creatures. When was the last time intelligence came into, uh, you right. know, uh, into and, the, at this level? Right. And within humans, I think people get confused between these two different things. Within the band of human intelligence, intelligence is not the most important thing. Humans have a lot of other attributes, but intelligence is a very important thing for people. We have but a lot of other... Gorillas are more intimidating as a right. uh, species than, yes. than we are, but That's gorillas right. did not build this right. yeah. studio. And humans are... Ex like humans are dangerous as hunters, for example, because we're smart. We do things like, you know, crowd the woolly mammoths off cliffs and set traps. And like uh, uh, human, we have we have whites in our irises. It's the exact balance uh, of white to color uh, is what communicates what we're looking at. Other primates have black eyes because they don't want the other other creatures to see them because they're trying not, not to give away information. We have the white uh, around the iris because... It lets you tell what other people are looking at. And you actually have this eerie ability to do it. You know exactly what other people are looking at. Imagine hunting. These creatures are hunting you. And you see one of them. And it, one of them can, like, indicate to the other one across the way that they just saw a deer by, by, like, looking at the deer. And there's no sound exchanged at all. It's just purely this, like, and, like, you have to be pretty smart to do, like, big, very strong theory of mind to do that. If you build something that is a lot smarter than us, not, like, somewhat smarter, again, within humans, the sp smartest people don't rule the earth obviously um but like as much smarter than we are as we are than like dogs right like a a big jump that thing is intrinsically pretty dangerous because if it gets set on a goal that isn't that that uh like the 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 instrumental first instrumental steps with instrumental convergence the first instrumental step towards achieving that goal is we'll go first step one if, it, if this is easy for you because you're really just that smart well, step one, just kind of like take over the planet, right? Like, it's like, then I just have control over everything. And then, and then step you, two, solve my goal. Can you define instrumental convergence for those that didn't sit through three and a half hours yeah. of me talking to Ellie as you did Yeah. yeah. So, so instrumental convergence is this idea that like, uh, often when you're trying to achieve a goal, step one is to achieve a instrumental goal along the way. So like, if you want to like, for example, like, uh, uh, what's, what's the, uh, Paper clips is the one that. Yeah, yeah. No, used, so, but... uh, no, I, I'm thinking more like an instrumental instrumental convergence. Uh, I'm trying to give an example for where it happens to people in their people's lives. Um, oh, in chess, um, your actual goal is to checkmate them. But like along the way to checkmating them, checkmating them, most of the time, one of the things you want to do is take their pieces. Now, you could not take their pieces. There's probably I bet a really a really good chess player against a kind of mediocre one could checkmate them without taking any pieces, just like trapping their their. But like. That's like even more impressive. But like generally speaking, if you're just trying to win a game of chess, taking their queen, taking their pawns, taking taking their pieces is a good idea. It like makes it easier to checkmate them. And so I can predict something about almost anyone, any good chess player. They'll take a bunch of their pieces. They'll take the other person's queen eventually, probably. Um, in the same way, you can predict uh, that corporations uh, uh, that want to expand into a new market, 
there's an instrumental goal. It's like step one, they'll probably hire people in that market. It's like just predictable. And in general, if you want to accomplish most goals, like big goals, step one is like accumulate a lot of money and power. Like if you have a, if you have a goal of uh, changing the world, accumulating money and power or accumulating followers who like care, listen to you and will do what you say. These things are like obviously good first steps. Even if you don't, even if you didn't even know what the next goal was, they would be good first steps. And if you know what it is, they definitely good first step. Step one, if you can achieve it along the way to, to achieving any big goal, yeah, paper clips is the traditional one, um, is first just as if you, if you can pull this off, which like you can't, humans can't do this. We don't think of goals like this because we're not capable enough, but if you could pull it off, step one would be like, well, first I'm just going to like literally just make sure I have total control over everything at all times. And then step two, I'll like do whatever it is. Step two, do the thing. <laughs> Easy. I already have control over everything. No one can stop me. I have access to all the resources. Simple. Um, and I think people just don't, it's hard. It's hard to, people don't imagine sufficiently capable as sufficiently capable. Um, and then, so then, and some, some people have this idea like, oh, well, what if we just don't give it goals? Well, first of all, we are giving it goals. People are already building agents, but let's just say we didn't. And so you ask this Oracle, what's the best way for me to accomplish goal X? And it knows if it takes you literally, um, and it, and it, it, it actually answers your question correctly. Answer to your question will, will be a thing that causes you to bootstrap an AI that then takes over the world yeah. and accomplishes the goal. That's the most reliable way to accomplish that goal. Now, I just laid out a chain of argument with a lot of if this, then this, if this, then this, if this, then this. Uh, I know Eliza thinks that like we're all doomed for sure. Um, I buy his doom argument. I buy the chain and the logic. I just think that like, first of all, I'm less optimistic that the current set of technology is going to get to self-bootstrapping super intelligence. I'm less optimistic than he is that, or you get optimistic or pessimistic, whatever. I'm less, I'm less sure than he is that when it hits that self-bootstrapping step, that, uh, that process will be fast and that we will, that there aren't important new discoveries that will take a long time on top of that, that we haven't found. I'm less sure that, uh, uh, so there's an idea of alignment, getting it, you could make the AI such that it wants the same things we want. And then if you ask it to do the thing, it won't go and do horrible things because it's not dumb and it's aligned. And if it wants the same things, it knows what you mean. It's smart and it has, it has aligned goals. Hooray, like that'll work great. I'm le uh, Eliza thinks that we're like just alignments, this incredibly hard problem that like is almost unsolvable and we're doomed. I'm like not so sure. I think it's a more solvable problem than he thinks it is for a variety of reasons. You know, just it would take too long to like go into, but like my my belief is that it's easier. Um, and so uh, as a result, like my P doom, my probability of doom is like my bid ask spread, and that's pretty high because I have a lot of uncertainty, but I would say it's like between like five and 50. So there's a wide spread, which I think Paul Cristiano, you know, Paul Cristiano, like who handled, right. uh, you know, a lot of the stuff within open AI, I think said 25 to 50. It seems yeah. like if you, if you talk to most AI yeah. researchers, there's some it, preponderance of people that give that some percentage. Should, that should cause you to shit your pants. But it's human level extinction. I think. Yeah. yeah. Or, but no, no, it's not just human level extinction. It's such extincting humans is bad enough. It's like potential destruction of all value in the light cone. Like, like not just for us, but for any alien species caught in the wake of the explosion. Like, uh, it's like a universe destroying bomb. Like it's really, if, 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 if it's really bad, it's bad in a way that's like makes global warming, like not a problem. It's bad in a way that makes no normal kinds of bad, not a, that's not no normally I'm like, yeah, we'll just roll the dice. It's fine. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. No, no. Like this should go, this is not a figure it out later thing. This is like a big fucking problem southern manhattan miami might go underwater yeah. like okay okay but this is we're talking about and so why do you think i mean i, I it's, it's like someone figured out how to invented a way to make like 10x more powerful fusion bond bombs out of like sand and bleach that like could anyone could do at home yeah um it's terrifying and and i've had enough time with it now that i can laugh about it when i first realized it was fucking heart stopping when was that uh probably like it's it was it was a dinner i went to before when opening i was just we had basically right after attention is all you need had been written like and they sort of realized the scaling laws were there and i went to a dinner and someone was there and they were talking about it and they were like i think we were were uh we actually might be on the the path to build with general ai attention all you need was 2018 yeah like tw i think early 2017 2017 um and google paper that yeah, yeah, started the google all, paper this, that this all off and uh and I, I heard about the problem. I thought about it. I just had, I like, I'd been like, the, the AI doom thing seems plausible. Whatever. Like, 
yeah, I don't think an AI is coming anytime soon, so I'm just like not gonna think about it that hard yet. Uh, and then I was like, oh, maybe, and then I started thinking about it harder, and then I was like, oh, shit. Hi, I'm Logan Bartlett, the host of this podcast. I just wanted to take a quick second to tell you that we have a bunch of killer guests coming on over the course of the next few weeks. And so if you're enjoying these conversations with both entrepreneurs and investors, please do subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out. Yeah, I don't think an AI is coming anytime soon, so I'm just like not going to think about it that hard yet. Uh, and then I was like, oh, maybe, and then I started thinking about it harder, and then I was like, oh, shit. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> um, and so uh, uh, I guess the... The pro I believe the proper response is like, unfortunately, this isn't the kind of thing where uh, we can stop forever. And it unfortunately is also the kind of thing where like uh, more time is good. Like I'm actually, I'm, I'm okay with stretching out the time a little bit, but like ultimately to solve the problem, um, I think this is one of my biggest points of divergence with uh, Yudkowsky. Um, he is a mathematician, philosopher, you know, decision theorist by training. I am an engineer. And my, everything I've ever learned about engineering is the only way you will ever get something that works. If you need to work on the first try is to build lots of prototypes and models at a smaller scale and practice and practices and practice and try build start, start building the thing but like smaller and if there is a world where we survive it is and everything goes wrong where we build an ai that's smarter than humans and we survive it it's going to be because we built smaller ais in that and we actually had lots of as many people smart people as we can working on that and taking the problem seriously and so I'm, I'm generally, I'm in favor of trying to create some kind of fire alarm where we like, like maybe not AI is bigger than X at some point, like try, trying to like create a, and I actually think there's good reason to believe, like nobody wants to end the world. And this argument is not that hard to understand. And so I actually think there's a good, there's a good option for international co cooperation and like treaties about some sort of, you know, the, the AI test ban treaty about not bigger than X at some point. I don't think we, I don't think we're actually at the point where it doesn't need to be not bigger than our, the current AIs are just not that smart yet. But I think we should be moving towards creating that kind of a, some kind of soft, I don't know, we have to figure out what that looks like because it's, it's trickier to set that than it. Setting that rule is way harder than it looks. Writing good policy is hard. We should be thinking about it now. I just think we're not we're ready for, for it yet. But in the meantime, on these smaller models, we, it is good that lots of people are fucking around with them. It's good that we have more and more people trying to figure out how they work and trying to figure out how you can make them do things, how to figure out how to make them do bad things. The best way to figure out how to stop a big AI from doing bad things, well, not the best way. There's a bunch of, it is true, there's a bunch of failure modes for super intelligent AIs that don't exist in less super intelligent AIs. And we better not bet on, oh, don't worry, it works It works in the dumb ones. It'll work, no, no, that's not how it works. You can't do that. But like, we will figure it, we are figuring out more and more about the principles of how it works. And if, if we survive, it's gonna be because that process produces a, a good generalized understanding, a good generalized model of how these kinds of predictive models, which I think includes humans as we are some kind of very complex predictive model with other stuff too, but like that's a big part of what a human is. We'll understand how those work at a deeper level. We'll have some of some science of it actually. And that's what we need. We need a science of AIs. Right now we have an engineering of AIs and no science of AIs. And we need to get, use the engineering to bootstrap ourselves into a science of AIs before we build the super intelligent AI so that it doesn't kill us all. Why do you think people are struggling with the discourse around this? Like very smart people oh, seem to it's abject. Very, it's very, very obvious, very obvious. Mood affiliation rules everything around me. People make, make, don't make decisions on a reasoning basis. I mean, myself included most of the time. I happen to like, I happen to find this problem interesting and compelling on its own. So I spend a lot of time like digging into the arguments themselves because I was like drawn to it. But like most of the time, I make decisions the same way as everyone else does. The person pitches me on pitching me on the flat Earth thing, who's saying that like a bunch of things. I don't really like listen to them. I just like I can. They say some things, and it triggers like, oh, you're part of that tribe. Those people generally, I don't think think very clearly. I'm just gonna discount everything you're saying and ignore you. Yeah. And Robin like, Hansen talks about yeah. 9 11 people, and it's like yeah, yeah. you don't argue with them. You just sort of move on yeah, from yeah, the exactly. conversation. And the AI people sound like uh, religious nuts. Who are telling you about the end of the doomsday end of the world and it, it sadly pattern matches really nicely right like the ai is like the you know is like the antichrist it's coming and you know if what if we're good the good ai will come and save us from that I mean, it's like it sounds like like uh christian rapturists yes um last of us it, what was yeah it? yeah it uh unfortunately um reasoning from fictional evidence isn't doesn't work and that mood affiliation reminds me of this is not an argument and the earth is not f round because the flat earther is sound crazy. The earth is round because you can demonstrably see that the earth is round and go measure that yourself. And it's true. And if you make decisions based on anyone who's telling you that doing X will unleash 
a force which is going to kill us all. They sound like a bunch of uh, crazy religious people. Because it's never happened before. It's never happened before. Guaranteed, guaranteed, the first time that's true, we're all dead. Because you, your algorithm always predicts the same thing. You're the, you're the thing you're going through in your head always predicts the same outcome for anyone who is predicting doom from creating a powerful force beyond human ability. Now, it is true you should be skeptical in general when someone proposes that because there are a lot, there are infinity examples from the past three, you know, 6,000 years of history of people predicting that falsely about things. And, and people, people made imaginary cures for med medicine, medicinal cures for like tinctures that were supposed to cure you for a very, very long time. And then we made one that worked. <laughs> <laughs> and and you just can't reason that way. Sometimes sometimes it's new. Sometimes it's not like before. Usually it's like before, and sometimes it's not. And I I am personally convinced this time it is not like before. And I encourage everyone who's in that mode. Like the main thing that what, what I want you to pay attention to is listen to me like people like me. Listen to people like uh, even Yudkowsky, who I, I disagree with him on the amount of doom. But we're like pro cryonics pro technology like technology is going to fix all our problems crazies yeah. like if i if i have a if i have a defect it's that i am too pro technology i want too little regulation like if are my you doing cryonics by the way i have not signed up yet i really should i've been it's one of those things on my to-do list i'm failing the rationality test yes um uh but uh but you're a techno optimist i'm a techno optimist and like and most of you should notice that the people the people who are affected by this particular one are not like the people who generally predict. We're not Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich is full of shit on like, oh, the doom is coming, the population bomb. He is wrong and weirdly so and refuses to learn from his lesson that he's wrong again. He's wrong over and over again. This is not like that. Like, I am not panicked about global warming. I think I think global warming is a real, a real thing. I don't want to say like, I'm not going to walk away thinking like, I think global warming isn't real, but like, I believe, I, I believe in technology. The engineers will figure it out. Don't worry, it's going to be fine. I'm like quite sure. Um, it might have some... Well, depending on whether we have the political will to get around to it quickly or not, it might have m more or less dire consequences. But like, we will figure it out eventually. It, it will be fine. We will figure. It, we will get this. I do. And, and it's okay. So here, here I am being the guy who's like the techno optimist, and I am like, no, no, no. The AI thing, the, the, this thing, though, actually, maybe, maybe a problem. And I think if you're if you are rejecting it because we sound like a bunch of crazies, just notice that like at least a, some number of people who are worried about this are not are on your I'm on your team I'm on the techno optimist team really think and it and it's not an it's not obvious why it's true it takes a good deal of engagement with the material to see why it's true because at first at first it seems like it shouldn't be that big of a deal it shouldn't be that big of a problem but then the more you dig in the more you realize like oh well actually but wait a second and it is and so like I just encourage people to engage with the technical merits of the argument and I always welcome people to come to to you know ask questions but also like if you want to debate no, no, I have an idea. We can align it this way, do this, and it will create a, you know, it will create a, the AI that like cares about things we care about. We want your ideas. Like, that's great. Let's have an argument about that. Self-improvement won't work. Okay, if no, because like people have said self-improvement will work in the past and it never did, then I don't want to hear it because whatever, that's not a real argument. But if you have an actual like argument about how the current learning techniques won't work for that for some reason, engineering reason, Absolutely. Let's talk about it. Well, I'm glad we spent all this time building your credibility as a normal person. Just yeah. to, to go off the rails <laughs> here. But but seriously, I mean, it's uh, it, it is something that people are like genuinely concerned about. And there's no incentive you have. Mark Andreessen published something recently about like AI yeah. and he had a bunch of different points against it. But the AI killing everyone point was the first one. And I, I think it went back to a lot of discourse around people that profit from this is their business and this is how they make money and therefore that's what why they're intended to communicate in this way. You are not I, I as far as I know, your business is not in dooms uh, doomsday scenario planning around AI. I have, I have no financial stake in in either doomsday scenario planning around AI or the other weird like double think forty chess thing people impute to uh, it is like. Oh, we're actually trying to build up OpenAI and Anthropic as being and Google as being like super powerful. And it's all an ego thing about making talking about how amazingly great this stuff is, so that we can like earn, raise more money for OpenAI and, and for like, regulatory capture. Or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like I don't own any equity in any of these things. You're not trying to help your 2006 yes. batchmate yeah, or 2005 batchmate Sam I, Altman. I, no, 
he's he's Sam Altman's really good at raising money. Yes. Like he does not need my help. Yes. I, I promise. Yeah. What would you recommend to people? I mean, uh, if they are curious about all of this stuff and like I, I when people ask yeah, me yeah. about it, because I've had Eliezer on, yeah. they're like, so now what? And yes. I'm like, ah, you know, call your congressman. I don't, I, I, I don't um, know. So there's sort of two paths that you can where you can contribute if you care about this problem. One is um, if you're technical and you're technically minded um, and you think that you uh, maybe you want to work on it, like go learn how the AIs work and work on interpretability and work on uh, corrigibility and- Can you define those terms? Uh, so interpretability is like understanding what's going on inside the AI. Which we have very little understanding right. of right now. Yeah, and corrigibility is, is how do you make a decision-making thing that is willing to be corrected by others? Um, because actually, it's, it's, and that's kind of, a, that's where Eliza has a lot to say about this. It's kind of a decision theory thing. How do you get it to sort of like believe that even though everything it knows seems like this is the best way of doing it, the other people are telling me that's not right, and so I'm open to being corrected by their point of view. How do you make it? It's sort of this, how do you give how do you give something humility almost in a way, right? Um, and and we have no idea to do that either. Um, we've made some we've made more progress on interpretability than corrigibility, but we made a little bit of progress on both, and we're making more on interpretability. And what the, my real pitch for this is, it's actually really interesting. There's just stuff lying around that no one's checked no one's tried it's like a when the microscope was invented and suddenly like you could just make a scientific career by like pointing microscopes at things and like there were like lots of things to point the microscope at that no one had ever looked at before we have a mind you can go look at and examine and experiment with we've never had one of those and so there's a bunch of like interesting kind of like scientific work too so basically i would encourage people to go do scientific work on ais go take the ais other people have built and then the, the engineering and try to see what science you can do to them Particularly around interpreting what's going on inside them, or how you get them to accept corrective. Um, if you're more, if you're not technically minded and you don't feel like learning how to like actually build a transformer, um, there you have there's less obvious how you contribute directly. But uh, I think mostly like uh, helping correct the debate and correct the tone of the discussion because this like the super intelligent AI must kill it might kill everyone thing gets wrapped together with a bunch of other concerns about AI that are real. They're their things, but they're like normal concerns. Like, will it just cause discrimination? Will job it job loss? Will it call job loss? Like, I know that like, that stuff's all like a thing, but like, honestly, on those things, I sort of feel about it the way I feel about most regulation. We're like, you know, like it's a little early, probably there probably will be a good regulation to write. We don't know what it looks like. The area is evolving so fast, very hard to write good, good regulation. Don't let that get confused. Um, job loss doesn't kill everyone. Yeah. So there's, so there's, there's, there's AI ethics and then there's, then, then there's AI not kill everyoneism, And the AI not kill everyone thing is like, we need the AI to not kill everyone. Don't let people mush it together. When you see, hear people conflating the two, correct the record, uh, because they're just not the same idea. Um, and they're not the same kind of problem and they won't be solved with the same kind of tools. And, uh, uh, the danger is that those two get sort of wrapped together into some thing that gets rejected by people who are just like, well, I don't, who reject the safety, AI safety, AI ethics stuff that they is like, well, this doesn't really make sense, which I kind of agree with a lot of the people who say like, most of that stuff kind of doesn't make sense to me. I could see in theory, maybe some of it. Um, we will throw out the the good part with the bad. And a lot of that other stuff is true of almost any technology, right? Yeah, in some yeah, yeah. Ways. That stuff is just general. It's general technological. like. And that's my issues. thing of why I think Silicon Valley in particular has, has struggled to talk about this.